Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Winfield United and our virtual service for this Sunday, July 19th. No matter who you are, no matter where you come from, you are welcome here. And whenever we worship in this space, we acknowledge that we are standing on the traditional and unceded territories of the Sayok Okanagan peoples. If you have a candle, let us light our candles together. To remind ourselves that there is light in the darkness and that we can share that light with one another in our own times of darkness and we can share the light of love with the world. Let us quiet our minds and center ourselves with a few words. Take a deep breath and put your feet on the floor and let's pray. Gathering God, we come to this time and place, having experienced challenge and blessing over the week that has been. May our hands reach out to one another in friendship and offer help when help is needed. May we share our stories with one another to bring comfort, inspiration, and joy. Open our minds to discover new truth about you, ourselves, each other, and our world. Open our hearts so that we may welcome one another freely, just as you welcome us. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is from Voices United, number 409, Morning Has Broken. I'm going to invite Gary to unmute his microphone and share with us a reading, a song for today. Gary. Okay. This morning's reading is regarding Psalm 139 attributed to David. It speaks of a very personal and intimate relationship between the Psalter and his divine creator. These um, verses speak of David's view of God as omnipresent in all things, 
There is no place he can go where God's presence is not already there. It's referred to as the inescapable God. O oh God, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I, be, I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Shoal, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes behold, beheld my unfo pardon me, unformed presence, substance in your book were written, all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How mighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. And finally, two pages stuck together. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. May these words open us to the Spirit's presence and may wisdom come to us this day. Thank you, Gary. Over the past few weeks, we have been considering some of the inventions of summer. Sunflowers, the three sisters of seed, corn, seeds of corn, bean, and squash. Today, though, we're looking at something that reminds us of the season of summer, but is far less appealing, and that is the pesky mosquito. When we think about this tiny winged creature with its distinctive high-pitched hum and ability to draw blood and leave an itchy whelp behind, the majority of us likely see mosquitoes as a seasonal annoyance and do our best to repel and avoid them. But I learned some of the insect's role in world history this past week and the formidable force it has been. In his book, The Mosquito, a Human History of Our Deadliest Predator, historian Timothy Weingard documents this bug as not merely an itchy pest, but a force of nature that has dictated the outcome of significant events throughout world history. Mosquitoes are seemingly as old as time itself and have been shown to be present some 100 million years ago. When the extinction event of an asteroid hitting the Earth, dinosaurs were apparently found to be already in decline from mosquito-borne diseases. Malaria devastated prehistoric Africa to such a degree that people evolved sickle-shaped red blood cells to survive it. The disease killed ancient Greek and Roman populations as well as their enemies playing major roles in the outcomes of their wars. Hippocrates associated the late summer surge of malaria with the dog star, calling the sickly time the dog days of summer. In the third century AD, 
Malaria epidemic saw massive numbers of people joining the much persecuted faith of Christianity that emphasized healing and care of the sick and helping to establish it as a world religion. Weingard also discusses in his book that for much of the world's military history, deaths by mosquitoes far outnumbered and were more decisive than deaths in battle. Mosquitoes and their deadly viruses were introduced to communities through colonization, the slave trade, and various military invasions and shaped the course of human history. At any one time, there are apparently some three trillion mosquitoes on the planet. That's a lot of swatting and bothering. But perhaps there are things from mosquitoes that we humans can learn. They are definitely persistent. They will spend a whole entire night with you in your tent and buzz in your ear to make their presence known and wait for their opportunity to bite you. They never give up. Mosquitoes teach us not to underestimate. The size in the case of a mosquito is irrelevant, as I shared with you earlier. The impact this insect, which is smaller than your pinky finger, has. Just because something is viewed as small doesn't mean it isn't impactful or significant. Acceptance. This is a tough one. Sometimes we cannot avoid the swarm of mosquitoes that want to alter our idea of a good time outside. We do our best to prepare and to defend, but this, part of the natural, this is part of the natural order of life. Mosquitoes remind us that we share this planet with all life forms and that we humans are not as powerful as we make ourselves out to be but are part of something so amazingly interconnected, and even a pesky mosquito is part of this ecosystem. Is God in the mosquito? That question I'm sure has been asked as long as there have been humans to ask it. Our psalm today sings the praises of a God presence that never leaves the writer alone. It doesn't matter where he goes in life, God is already there. From the beginning, when the cells started to divide and create his being, God was there. Wherever he travels, whatever circumstances confound him, he feels a sense of the God spirit with him. Life is not always easy. We so often tend to only see the God presence in those things we identify as beautiful, and experiences that are pleasurable. But what about when life throws us a curveball? When plans made become plans put on hold due to illness or unemployment or insufficient work, ended relationships and economic uncertainty. But we persevere. We find our strength in the support and care of one another. Our life experiences carry us forward, changing us, and adapting us to those things that are bothersome and problematic. And as we hear and experience in our psalm this morning, God is always with us. In the heat of the day, the mosquito buzzing in our ear. May the Spirit of God be with us in all of our experiences of change and uncertainty if we can find God in the not so great moments of everyday life. Perhaps mosquitoes really are an invention of summer. Amen and amen.
I have a minute for mission to share with you all this morning. Today's minute is entitled Protecting the Children. Imagine growing up in a place of conflict where you live in a constant fear of violence. This is what it's like to grow up in Gaza. As a church family, our hearts cry out for those who live in fear every day. Mission and Service supports Defense for Children International Palestine, which offers programs for children in that region. Members of the Abu Arar family were on their land across the street from their residence in a Zetuan neighborhood in northern Gaza. Around 6 p.m., a rocket struck that area, severely injuring 19-month-old Saba Mahmoud Hamdan Abu Arar. The child died around 7.30 p.m. from extensive shrapnel wounds. Her aunt and the fetus she was carrying were also killed. A three-year-old sister and other family members sustained injuries. Based on evidence gathered from the scene, witnesses and experts, Defense for Children International Palestine concluded the blast was the result of a misfired rocket fired by a Palestinian armed group nearby and was not caused by an Israeli forces strike. Incidents like this one happen often in Gaza. Israeli and Palestinian forces have been in conflict for decades. And as in many conflicts, children are often the victims. We give thanks for the work of global partners like Defense for Children International Palestine, which offers programs for children to experience in art what they are experiencing and activities that help them just to be children. If mission and service giving is already a regular part of your life, thank you so much. If you have not given, please join me in making mission and service giving a regular part of your life of faith. Loving our neighbor is at the heart of our mission and service. We're now going to turn to our prayers of the people. And I'm going to invite those of you that bring concerns and celebrations also to unmute your microphone and share them with our praying community. I have a celebration and that um, on July 22nd, so this Thursday, Mike and I will be celebrating our 25th wedding anniversary. Ooh, <laughs> Who <yay>. knew? <laughs> so long. <laughs> people remember because they were probably at our wedding, some people. <laughs> well, happy anniversary to you both. That's Thank wonderful. You. Congratulations. Happy anniversary, Mike and Marg. Well, it was our oldest son, uh, Andrew. It was his 48th birthday yesterday. Uh, hard to believe. I just got off the phone with Joyce and she apparently is listening uh, to the service, although somehow the Zoom connection didn't, didn't get in, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm just very thankful that she, uh, um, she's willing to go out of her comfort zone to do this. So um, yeah, so that's, um, uh, yeah, that's good. Absolutely. It's good. I would also at this time ask for prayers for my ex-brother-in-law who has been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and has surgery at the University of Alberta Hospital on Thursday. I'm in close contact with his daughter. So yeah, it's just um, just because somebody's not connected anymore through, you know, through the separation divorce doesn't mean that 40 years, um, 40 years just doesn't matter anymore, but it does. So Melanie? I'd <clears throat> just like to lift up the doctors uh, that are going to be pre uh, preparing and doing the surgery for Dawn this week and that they will make, you know, the right decisions. They will be able to be precise and accurate and that Dawn and Bev can be at peace with 
uh, the procedure that's going forward. And we just all I know lift you up, Bev and Dawn, and in our prayers and our hearts, and just know that uh, you're not alone. I also want to offer up prayers for Lynn Lemp, who's traveling tomorrow for some special tests at the Cancer Agency in Vancouver. And so safe journeys for Lynn and Dawn and, and, and praying for good results and important information that will come from this. With those things spoken and unspoken, let us pray. God with us and God within us. We pray this day for patience for all those things we no longer control and maybe never did. Today, we remember the situations around our globe related to COVID, for those who are sick and those who care for them. We remember medical researchers this day as they race to find a vaccine. We pray for families who are anxious, stressed and uncertain about the future. We remember those and lend our hearts to those awaiting surgeries and medical treatments, as well as for the strength of their caregivers. We think of and send our prayers and energies to the families of the victims of the Jasper bus crash this weekend. As we enjoy this long awaited season of summer before us, we acknowledge that it is indeed a time of sadness and grief for others. We pray for those in our community who are in need of our thoughts, our support and encouragement for Dawn and Bev, for Lynn and Dawn, for Jim and Sharon and family, for Sandy Hebert and her family. We gather all of these prayers into one. And in the silence of this space, we pray the words that have the most meaning for us or simply reflect on all that has been shared. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 647 from Voices United. Travel on, travel on. Thank you. 
And so we travel on. These next days and weeks will take us on many journeys and different paths and different experiences. And may we know that we do not go alone, that we take one another with us, mosquitoes and all. I won't be with you the next two Sundays. Uh, next Sunday, we'll welcome Jim Taylor to leadership, followed by Doug Martindale on the 2nd of August. So thank you to both those gentlemen for, um, for taking those services on. I'm on two weeks of holidays, and I will rejoin you for Sunday, August the 9th. So blessings to you all on the way. And thanks again to everyone who made today possible. Thanks to Verena. Welcome back, Verena, in the office. Uh, to Elaine on piano. To Reg, our vocalist this morning. And to Gary, our reader. And thanks to all of you uh, for joining us far and wide. And as we go, let us say our words of blessing together and sending forth. So I'm going to invite us to unmute our microphones and say together. As we leave, um, may we count our blessings, blessings embody and body our faith, live with a never look down the for life, struggle for life. No one no behind every, every face as is born at work, and know that wherever we go, the spirit of God is already there. Amen. Amen. Thank you.